Today here at Miller Tech, we're gonna go over with Lester to the battery testing lab. We're gonna talk all kinds of advantages and disadvantages, all the details as it relates to series and parallel battery connections. This should be a good one. Thank you so much for watching along. Let's get over to the lab, let's go. All right, so what we got here today is we're going to be talking about series and parallel connection. I couldn't even explain how many times we get the question, um, how do I connect my batteries in series or how do I connect them in parallel? What are the different terms? So a long time ago, an old friend of mine told me the best way to remember what series and parallel is about is he told me parallel, just remember it's a pair of something. In this instance, we're talking about a pair of batteries. So we have two 36 volt batteries and they are connected with positive to positive, negative to negative. So that means it's a pair of batteries that are connected in a pair. We're not changing the voltage. These are 36 volt batteries. The voltage is staying the same, but the amp hours are doubling because you're taking one of each and adding them to make a pair. So now you have a 100 amp hour battery pack right here. If you look over here to the, to the right, we're going to have three 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries, and these are connected in series. And what he told me is the best way to remember is if you connect batteries in series, they, the voltage raises. So now you have 12 volts connected over here. This makes 24 volts. These two, you add another one, you have 36 volts. So now we have 36 volts of power in this pack instead of 12 volt. And when you do that, when voltage goes up, it becomes serious. So serious voltage means your batteries are connected in series. And parallel means there's a pair of batteries connected. The voltage is not rising, only the capacity is rising. All right, so the second part of this video, we're gonna talk about charging batteries in series or in parallel. So these three batteries right now are connected in series like we talked before. There's 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. We connected negative to positive, negative to positive. And if you look, this is making a complete circuit. Positive is where you're going to pull power from. And then this circuit is complete because it goes through here and they're all connected to make 36 volt. Your negative is coming off of here. So if you have your charger or your trolling motor, or anything you wanna hook up to this 36 volt pack, it needs to go from here to here. When we do a parallel, we have positive to positive, negative to negative, and what you'll do is we recommend connecting a charger here and here. So one end of the charger on one battery, the other end on the other battery, and then you can do your trolling motor on the other side. You can put everything on these terminals, it's gonna work, but it just balances everything better if you cross. So this is, these are your charging cables. You put one on one battery, one on the other battery, and then you have these two terminals you might as well use for your trolling motor or anything else. So any loads incoming or outgoing, we always recommend just connecting on different batteries. So we also want to talk about battery cables today since we're talking about parallel and series connections on batteries. I thought we'd uh, show you guys what we as Miller Tech believe is the right cabling technique. So here I have a normal cable, a 600 volt welding cable. It's not a bad cable. We use this a lot in our solar systems, but for a marine application, um, we wouldn't recommend it. There's no coating, there's no tinning on this wire. If you look, these are the parallel cables that we sell on our website. All the strands are, are tinned, so they're gonna resist corrosion. Where with this copper one, if this gets wet or any moisture, it's gonna corrode very quickly. And this also is a marine style cable, so it's very flexible. The reason it's flexible is because we have a few thousand more strands of wire than we do in this welding cable. So this is really awesome. It's very flexible and it's great wire. That's what we use for our parallel cables. We're also gonna show you our crimp here. Hydraulically crimped, we've seen so many boats where they come in and they have battery issues and a lot of times it's they have bad connections. You don't want to be crimping this without the proper equipment. So what are some advantages using three 12 volt batteries to make 36 volt versus using two 36 volt batteries that are already built internally to be 36 volt to create a bigger pack? Our opinion is, and what we've found over the years is two 36 volt batteries, even a single 36 volt battery is going to be much more reliable long-term than three 12 volts. Let's talk about advantages and disadvantages. I would say the only advantage with using three 12 volts is the fact if your cranking battery were to die, you could technically jump your, your big motor off of one of these batteries. And the other thing you can do, I guess, is if one of these batteries dies, you can most of the trolling motors you can run on 24 volts. So you could still use these two batteries. The flip side is these internals are not 
typically made for 36 volt. They do work and it can work, but long term, you're going to have problems. This battery might age different than this battery. And with time, five, six, seven years, this pack is only as good as the weakest battery. So if you have one of these batteries that's slowly losing capacity, your whole pack will only be as good as that battery. Where with these 36 volts, if one of these happens to go out, you can still keep going with 36 volts. You still have two batteries to rely on. You're not depending on one battery. I know a lot of people are worried about that. These, these are 36 volt, 50 amp hour. So you need two to create the 100 amp hour that we have with 312 volts. And with our experience, since we went to a 36 volt system, I can honestly say we've had probably 99% less calls for warranty and problems than we did when we were using 312 volts. Something about the 312 volt system, I think it's electronics don't like to work together. And this, these batteries are made for 36 volt inside and they just go and go and go. So this is our setup we're using and recommending at this time. Well, thank you so much for watching today's Tech Talk here at Miller Tech. We appreciate you guys watching along. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe. Click that thumbs up, ring the notification bell so you're getting all the notifications as we process new videos. We hope you had fun watching along and learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Thanks a ton. Check out MillerTechEnergy.com. Have a wonderful day.